lot riding on this report. You have a new note out. Uh, let's just start with this. I'm just looking at the estimates. These are the estimates. Revenue growth of 112%, EPS growth of 125%. Um, <laughs> just astronomical. It's like a head shaking your head, and you're one of the biggest fans of this company. Can this company meet these expectations? Can it even exceed them? Is just meeting them good enough for investors? Well, meeting them is not good enough, but I believe this is going to be a drop the mic moment for the godfather of AI, Jensen NVIDIA, because all of our checks are showing this is accelerating. And I think the street, like you said, every quarter, prove it, prove it. This revolution is just starting, but it all starts with NVIDIA. In my opinion, it is the most important earnings, not just of the year, potentially in many years because of what this represents in terms of tech. So I've been asking a lot of people this. Is it the earnings that matter or the guidance? Because the expectations are lofty. Let's say they, they meet or beat when it comes to revenue and EPS, but the guidance isn't what people are expecting. What does that do to the stock? What do you think it does to the market? It's all about the guidance. But, but all, I mean, we just got back from Asia. All of our checks are showing Street is still underestimating this acceleration. Because right now, the only game in town is Jensen. And really, if you look what NVIDIA is doing, especially from chips coming forward, this enterprise demand is just starting. And in my opinion, of course, Powell Jackson Hole is so important. Huge, obviously. But the, but the market, the, what it's going to do for the rest of the year, and I could argue even in 2025, it starts with this NVIDIA earnings. And I expect, get the popcorn ready. It's going to be a show. <laughs> you said this every quarter, Dan. No, but this, this get, is going to be a showstopper er showing where the revolution's going. Okay. And I think the skeptics continue to get proven wrong. What about the questions, um, the air pocket between different iterations of their chips, uh, some of their customers making their own chips, and the fact that the AI uh, enthusiasm seems to be dying down? You're not concerned about any of that. Yeah, so it's hit on them. For a delay two to three months, it's, I view that a, a, as sort of an asterisk. In other words, this is not moving the needle in terms of from a demand perspective. When you talk about AI in terms of some of the hype, look what we saw from the hyperscalers. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, what Nadella talked about, what Lisa Sue and AMD, the messy of AI Palantir in terms of the use cases. It's showing that now the second, third, fourth derivatives are just starting to play out. So when I look at what the godfather of AI, Jensen, and NVIDIA are doing, this is, we're talking about transformation. I believe a year from now, this is a $4 trillion mark cap along with Apple okay. and Microsoft. By the way, you changing his last name. It's Jensen NVIDIA. It's not Jensen Wong anymore. You just decided? Look, this you're, is... You're it, making decisions. I want to get back to your note. Um, according to your research, for every dollar spent on NVIDIA chips, it kind of flows through to the rest of the tech sector to 8 to $10. Um, what does that mean for some of these other stocks? That's the most important thing. Because remember, it's not just about NVIDIA. It's about the multiplier. It's about the revolution, the trillion dollars of CapEx. For every dollar spent on an NVIDIA chip, there's an 8 to 10 multiplier across the rest of tech. That's why it's so important in terms of what NVIDIA says for this bull market to continue. So you're saying it's a broad tailwind. It's not just in, it's a rising tide that's going to lift all boats. Because it's not just Even in software, because software seems to be under pressure, uh, or at least it was when it comes to this AI craze, and it seems like a lot of the money that was going to software has gone to chips. But even next week, you'll hear from Benioff and Salesforce, what are they focused on? AI. Look at McDermott and ServiceNow. In other words, it's just starting now. The software wave is the second, third derivative. That's why I think we're seeing here a year from now, NASDAQ 20,000, and it continues because now the rest of this party, it is only 9 p.m. in the AI party. That goes to That when? we believe it goes to 4 a.m. To 4? Not to sunrise, but it stops at 4. 4 a.m. And look, <laughs> will there be times music stops and there's glass yeah. in the floor? Yeah. But right now, what we hear next week, it shows this party, the music continues to play on. All right, I know tech is really a wheelhouse, but you look at the broader market as well. We're going to show a chart. This is the MAG7 and the S&P equal weight since the start of this quarter, the equal weight outperforming the MAG7. Um, when it comes to that MAG7 trade, how important are these earnings? We had our data team run the numbers. Uh, implied volatility post earnings, 10% up or down. What do you think this report does to that mega cap tech trade, that AI trade, et cetera? They're the torch bearers of this rally that continues. And I think it's just the start. Look what's happened with Apple in terms of the new iPhone launch. The AI story so will be led. So when video stops Mac the broadening, because this is what we're seeing right now with Equal, it's the broadening of the market. People are putting their money in other places, especially cyclicals ahead of a cut. So you're saying that this report could actually change some of those flows? Oh, I think it does. And I think ultimately tech will lead the market higher from a large cap perspective. 
We look into year end, and I think MAG-7 actually outperforms. But, look, but again, many have been skeptical. The bears in hibernation mode, they've been negative on big tech for the last few years. But when it comes down to numbers, when it comes down to this revolution, this is the 1995 Almost 1996 moment, but not a 1999 bubble moment. All right, guys, this is the part of the video where I'm going to break down the stocks that were mentioned in the CNBC clip. Today was all about NVIDIA and their expectations for their earnings that are going to be coming out next Wednesday on the 28th. But before we break down NVIDIA stock, I wanted to summarize what Jerome Powell said at the Jackson Hole meeting. He implied that there's coming rate cuts. He said the time has come for policy to adjust. He also said the Fed will do everything they can to support a strong labor market and that there's less risk to inflation, but more downside risk to employment. He really didn't say anything new. He really didn't say anything set in stone. He read straight off the prompt reader and didn't answer any questions when he was done. Right after he was done talking, the markets actually sold off pretty aggressively after gapping up this morning earlier. Now we're starting to rebound where we're up almost nine tenths of a percent. And Nvidia is up almost four percent today. So as of right now, it looks like the markets are digesting what he said in a positive way. On to Nvidia stock, guys. If this is your first video, the blue line is the 45 day moving average and the green line is the 200 day moving average. We've been on an absolute massive run from the lows down here to the highs we ran almost 44 percent guys in a straight line and that's even before the earnings come out so this could be a buy the rumor sell the news type of earnings event they could also come out and blow out expectations give even better guidance than expected and the stock continues to blast off to the upside we're kind of in no man's land right now we're well above the 45 day moving average and the white ascending trend line that it respected for several months i'm more or less expecting nvidia and the major markets to chop sideways through the rest of today and through wednesday until we get this number because this will affect all AI stocks. It's not just going to be NVIDIA. NVIDIA has astronomical expectations for what they're expected to meet on this earnings report, but their future guidance is going to be the real stock mover. The bullish case for NVIDIA stock, I would expect us to keep consolidating, let this 45-day moving average maybe catch up to the bottom, make that a nice support, and then continue to the upside. And for the bearish case for NVIDIA, we do have three consecutive lower highs, so that's bearish. We're also well above all of the trend lines and moving averages after a 45% move straight up. So taking those into consideration, we're definitely due for a sideways consolidation, even a pullback period after a move like this. You can see the last time Nvidia had a sell off, we had a double top, then we consolidated for about a month before breaking lower, touching the trend line and continuing to the upside. You can see right before earnings, they made it all the way back up to the previous highs at that make it or break it point. If they would have came in with bad numbers, it would have been able to sell off and had a triple top. But since they blew through the numbers, we had a gap up and it kept going to the upside. So just because we've had such a magnificent run does not mean that we can't keep going to the upside. It all depends on the numbers that are going to come out and more importantly, the future guidance for the years to come. If they come out again and smash on top and bottom lines, beat these crazy expectations and raise the guidance because there's just so much demand, guys, this stock is going to continue to fly to the moon. These last four quarters of Nvidia earnings have been unbelievable. We went from $2.70 up to $4.02 up to $5.16 per share up to $6.12 per share. Guys, these are unbelievable believable numbers. And Nvidia actually has a relatively low PE ratio compared to how fast they're growing and expected to keep growing into the future. So those are just some things to keep into consideration, guys. Remember, these are my thoughts and opinions. Do your own research before investing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.